Turning Red is Pixar's 25th film, as well as the latest in a series of animated films focusing on aspects of life with a fantastical twist. In a way, Turning Red is similar to other Pixar movies such as Luca, Inside Out, Coco, and even the underrated Brave. So that got us thinking, how does Turning Red compare to other Pixar films? A quick summary to make sure we're all on the same page. Turning Red is a coming-of-age fantasy comedy set in early 2000s Toronto and focuses on Mei Lin Lee, a 13-year-old girl who has to balance being a teenager with her newly discovered panda-related curse. Speaking of which, the transformation elements of the film is the first point that we want to discuss. As Turning Red isn't the only Pixar film to use transformation both as a plot point and as a metaphor. Just like last summer, we had the film Luca that had a similar element, with the character's sea monster forms essentially being an allegory for outsiders and being different in a way that's not only seen as weird by some people, but also dangerous. Because of that, the conflict mostly came from a societal point of view and the fear of others lashing out, and whether or not revealing the truth was worth risking their lives. In Turning Red, however, May's transformation is mostly seen as a positive thing by the kids at school, and she ends up doing very little to actually hide it from the public. This is a bit ironic, since the panda transformation seems to not only represent the unleashing of emotions, but also, in a sense, puberty, which is a time Topic that not many people are open about. So, instead of focusing on the reactions and possible backlash of society, Turning Red uses its transformation elements for a more personal conflict between May and her family, who only see their pandasides as an inconvenience. For this point, it's kind of like comparing apples to oranges, and while both of the films use transformation in completely different ways, we feel that both films incorporate it well into their stories and themes. Another point that Turning Red touches on is the incorporation of new cultures, outside of what American audiences are typically used to seeing. Mei is a Chinese-Canadian teenager, and both sides of her culture get attention. The Canadian side of the film setting is admittedly a bit more subtle, mostly incorporating small visual cues or lingo like hoosers. As for the Chinese side of the film, given that the director herself is Chinese, it's safe to say it's probably a bit more accurate than something like Mulan. While some of it is obviously fictional, the Chinese culture, as well as the point of view of what it's like growing up in an Asian household and the conflicts that can sometimes come from that, is still captured very well. Honor your parents. Of course, many other Pixar films have incorporated different cultures. Brave and Luca mostly use the aesthetics of their settings of Scotland and Italy, while Coco centered much of its story and themes around the Mexican culture and the Mexican holiday, Dia de los Muertos. When comparing them all, we'd say that Turning Red falls into the latter camp, feeling not only authentic and genuine, but also being able to make it so that the culture it uses is an integral part of the story. When it's impossible to swap out the culture, Culture that a film incorporates for a different one without completely changing the movie itself, you know you're doing something right. Our next point we'd like to touch on is how Turning Red promotes the idea of expressing your emotions. Like we said previously, the panda transformation can be seen as a puberty metaphor, but given that it's a form literally powered by emotion, it can also be seen as representing the power and freedom that comes with being emotionally honest and open. But there's another Pixar film that touches on emotions, and we're sure you all know it well. 2015's Inside Out was all about the importance of emotions, even the seemingly negative ones. And it seems like a theme that Pixar is still trying to teach young audiences. With Riley not wanting to disappoint her parents by not being their happy little girl anymore, and May not wanting to upset or disrespect her mother by being honest and confronting her. In both cases, the main characters learn to be honest with themselves and their families. The two films do, however, focus on different quote-unquote negative emotions. Inside Out was all about embracing sadness and grief, showing that processing these feelings and allowing yourself to cry can be beneficial in the long run. Turning Red, meanwhile, seemed to focus on anger and distress, and how holding in these emotions can potentially lead to people getting hurt. While Riley's sadness was an internal conflict that only harmed herself, both Mei and Ming's anger had the threat of hurting others, 
As we both hear about Ming hurting her mother and see Mei do the same thing in the film's climax. Unfortunately, while both films had good intentions, we feel like Inside Out does a better job at using this particular theme. Though the film may be a bit more blunt and not very subtle, this ultimately works in its favor as it's able to deliver its message clearly. Turning Red, though, models its message somewhat, with the rest of May's family still deciding to lock their pandasides away. The film also implies that, while their relationship isn't as fractured as Ming and Grandma Wu's, the relationship between May and Ming has changed and they aren't quite as close as they once were. May even states at the end of the film how she sometimes misses how things were, but accepts that things change and has no regrets about her choice, making the newly established honesty between her and her mother seem like a net positive overall. I'm finally figuring out who I am. Perhaps it's more realistic letting audiences know that being open and honest with their emotions sometimes comes with a cost, but it's still bittersweet in a way. That moves us nicely into our next point, themes of family. Turning Red opens with Mei talking about how important it is for her to respect and honor her parents. And honoring her parents essentially means doing everything they say. Mei's job at her family's temple also symbolizes themes of community and respecting your ancestors. Coco is another Pixar film that uses the theme of respecting and ultimately communicating with family, with Miguel being told over and over how he must put his family above his dreams of being a musician. In both films, it's up to the new generation to make a chance while still acknowledging the importance of family. In the case of Coco, the rest of Miguel's family is also able to make a change and ends up embracing music. We don't quite see the same amount of change in May's family since, again, her mother, grandmother, and aunties all decide to banish their pandas once again. But even so, they all still accept May's choice even if they are also concerned about it. Additionally, while things may have changed slightly in terms of her relationship with her mother, May is still able to keep both her family and her freedom to express herself, and is able to have a better balance between her duties and her own life now that Ming understands her better and accepts that her daughter is growing up. My panda my choice, mom. We also see in both films how the families are able to come together for the sake of saving one of their members, showing the importance of being there for family above all else. As such, we feel that both films do a good job of promoting communication, growth, and acceptance within family units that may otherwise stick just a bit too close to tradition at times. The final point we'd like to touch on is how Turning Red handles its mother-daughter relationship. The last Pixar film to touch on the complex relationship between mothers and daughters was 2012's Brave, and the relationship shown in that film was, well, a bit cliché to put it nicely. Merida was seen as a typical rebelling princess slash teenager, while Eleanor was seen as a stern but well-meaning and caring mother who just didn't understand. Though the two were eventually able to learn from each other and heal their relationship, it wouldn't be unreasonable to argue that the way this plot happened was perhaps a bit shallow and rushed. If anything, the film's conflict was more focused on the pride that the two characters had and how that was harming their relationship than on the relationship itself. Turning Red, meanwhile, is focused almost entirely on the mother-daughter relationship and as such is able to portray it in a much more nuanced way. Mei and Ming are shown to be incredibly close and affectionate, with Mei wanting nothing more than to make her mother proud, while Ming still pushes her daughter towards success and perfection. The ancestors would be so proud. She still clearly loves her and just wants to protect her, with this being the prime motivation rather than her just trying to mold Mei into who she wants her to be. Speaking of which, even with the aforementioned affection, the two of them still have issues and conflict with each other that ends up bubbling up to the surface over the course of the film, and thus have to be confronted. Turning Red also touches on how certain things in life like puberty, growing up, and the continuous pressure of expectations can sometimes lead to mothers and daughters especially becoming distant from each other and even accidentally hurting each other. We see Mei and Ming make a genuine connection, with Mei comforting the younger version of her mother after she learns about her past. We should also reiterate that although the ending of Turning Red is sort of bittersweet, it also shows how mothers and daughters can still learn to accept each other despite the conflicts that come with being open and honest, even if their relationship is still forced to change. Yes, Bray 
we've sort of touched on this too, but again, for the most part, it felt pretty typical and somewhat rushed, with Merida and Eleanor's relationship essentially getting an easy, happily ever after-esque ending. For these reasons, we feel like Turning Red does a much better and much more realistic job of utilizing and developing the relationship between Mei and Ming. Overall, Turning Red is able to fit in quite nicely with the rest of Pixar's repertoire. Though it may tread some familiar ground and, in some cases, not do as well as films that came before it, when it comes to other elements, the film is able to excel in ways that some of its contemporaries might not have been able to. Ultimately, there's just a lot to like and appreciate about Turning Red. And if someone has watched and enjoyed other Pixar films like Inside Out, Coco, and Brave, then it's likely that they'll enjoy this film too. But let us know in the comments section if you agree with our thoughts. And let us know what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos. But most importantly, stay wicked.